you know what? I think we're going to get three bids. No, you know what? We'll let you know. Let us sleep on it. I don't know. You're about $1,000 higher than the other company, and they were offering the same thing as you. You know what? You're a really good guy. We'll call you tomorrow. You know, we've heard them all, but in essence, when you are on a call where you're offering HVAC equipment solutions in a residential situation, these are all too common, and the reason is you have not built enough value in their mind or they have not received enough value and they're just not going to buy from you. Okay. And so regardless of how good you think your sales process is, if you don't have this addressed, it's really not going to <clears throat> make a difference for you. Okay. So let's talk about, let's talk about this right over here. This is a chart that was made by somebody somewhere and it's pretty well accepted. When people communicate something, the way it is received is not the way we think it is. In fact, only 7% of the communication are the actual words that come out of our mouth. The very thing we're focused on, I'm going to say exactly the right thing, and it's going to really change their mind, and they're going to buy from me. Guys, that's not the way it works. We're doing this all wrong. Pete's bringing it to you this uh, particular session. Now, throughout April, we're, this is the April Showers free HVAC train, training. I'm going to give you some nuggets as part of a deeper program later. But I promise you, every class that you go on, I'm going to give you something that's going to get you more sales when you step back into that scenario. Okay? So let's talk about that. 55% uh, is the body language. 38% is the voice and tonality. How do we communicate effectively in these areas? And then number two is, is this 7% a fixed number or is this something that can be adjusted based on the way we deliver our information? Can we open that 7% up? to 8, 9, 10, 20, 30, 50%. I'm here to tell you we can. So first of all, we've got to design our system to obliterate all of these false mindset assumptions. People come in thinking, you know, the way to buy is to get three bids and go with the cheapest one. Or maybe they think, eh, all the equipment's the same, it doesn't matter what brand you get. Or all the contractors are the same and it doesn't matter who puts it in. Ooh, cheaper is better. Bigger is better. You know what? You're just a salesman. You're just trying to sell me something. I don't believe anything you say. These are the kind of things that we have to obliterate in our process. And we're going to talk about that in layer uh, four. Now, layer two, you, you must build your process to achieve the desired outcomes that, the, that lead to the sale. So what are they? Well, first of all, you got to build rapport. We've heard this before. Build rapport, build rapport. Well, how do you do that? How do you make somebody like you? How do you make somebody trust you and possibly admire you within a matter of minutes from the time that you meet them? Especially if you don't have that outgoing, bubbly personality. Pete's got some tools for you that are very easy to follow once you learn them. And it's going to allow you to establish tremendous rapport within the first five minutes of meeting brand new people. And we're going to go into that. Um, the law of reciprocity. I'll scratch your back, you scratch my back, it's all good, right? Uh, creating certainty in you, your company, your offer, your solutions, and doubt in everybody else's without coming straight out and saying things like, that company over there sucks. Well, you can't do it that way. It doesn't work that way. They have to come to these conclusions on their own, and I'm going to show you how to do that. A desire for your company. Nah, I want this company to do my, my work. I want this company's installation procedures that are so unique that are going to address these problems that I've been made aware of. And I really don't know that anybody else can do this. This is what we have to be able to do. Uh, your unique design solution. You know, we've got some unique problems in our house. What do we, you know, this, this particular company comes in and, you know, can somebody else do what this company is going to do? I don't think so. I really like his solutions. We've got to create a sense of urgency. We've got to replace price concerns with re return on investment desires. And of course, resistance throughout the process, we have to reduce that, minimize that, eliminate it where possible. 
Um, and we have to be able to insert, insert these small commitments. There's a lot of different things that we're going to do that ultimately by the time we get to the end of our process, they're going to say, yes, that's what we want. So here are some of the desired results. First of all, suspend and eliminate the customer's preconceived opinions. They already know something, they're stuck in that, and they don't trust you because you're a salesperson. I'm going to show you how to suspend it. I'm going to show you how to eliminate that. The desire or value for your solution must exceed the investment amount. This is very specific. This is what it costs. This is what I perceive its value is. Once that value is above the cost, it just makes it automatically happen. It makes it that much easier. It makes the process, it reduces all the friction that allows you to get to that yes. The customer must sell themselves. Okay, you can sell all you want to, but when internally, that, that internal voice is going, you gotta go with this guy, you gotta go with this company, this is the one, this is the one. When you get that voice to talking, and I'm gonna show you how to do that, they can't resist it. You see, people buy for emotional reasons, then they justify it for intellectual reasons. We've talked about that on the prior video. So the process must justify the decision. So once we've created all that emotional desire, the process itself must be all laid out in such a way they can go, yeah, you know, we bought from them because of this, this, and this, all that stuff was in your process that you probably are already using and are struggling because it won't get in. I'm gonna show you how to put it in there. The decision to move forward must be reinforced you know, people um, at the end of the sales process, sometimes they have a little buyer's remorse. So we have to have, we have to address all of this psychology and we've got you covered. So please join us. If you have a sales process, don't worry. It's not here to replace it. If you don't have one, we have one that can start from scratch. But the point is, if you start to utilize these deeper tools, you're going to connect on levels that your competition just can't. And you're going to see your closing ratios go up. Pete Ramsey, HVAC greatness. Talking Pete, Pete Ramsey's HVAC sales greatness. Here to help you out in this uh, summer 2021. So I'll see you on the session. Look for it today at 2 p.m. Uh, if you're watching this today on Thursday, and I'll see you in the class. Bye-bye.